But up next, a WBC Super Bantamweight title eliminator scheduled for 12 rounds. Guillermo Rigondeau out of Cuba, now fighting out of Miami, taking on Julio Ceja from Mexico. Rigondeau at 38 years of age, has the reach advantage, one inch shorter than Ceja. To the ring, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the Mendeley Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. As Premier Boxing Champions presents our Fox PBC Fight Night and our big night of action brought to you by Lions Only Promotions, Mayweather Promotions and TGB Promotions as sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. This bound in the ring is sanctioned by the WBC, the president, is Mauricio Suleiman. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, we have Eric Cheek, John McKay, and Dave Moretti. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Bantamweight World Championship Eliminator. Introducing to you first on Fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim, hailing from Mexico City, La Ciudad de Mexico. He weighed in at 121 and three quarter pounds. His hard hitting record stands at 32 wins, three losses, with 28 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the former world title challenger and the current hard hitting top ranked contender, introducing Julio. Pollito Seja. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Santiago de Cuba. His weight, 121 and one half pounds. His record, 18 wins, one loss with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time Olympic gold medalist and acclaimed veteran of 12 world title appearances. Please welcome the former two-division champion of the world, introducing the jackal, Guillermo El Chacal Rigondeo. And now introducing a referee in charge to give instructions of this 10 or 12 round eliminator, we have Russell Mora. Now please. Now please. Trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Anything below this line is a foul. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Acuerdas en quiero una pelea limpia. Dios los bendigas, toquen guantes. Unified rules, no three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell. Only the referee can stop the fight. No decision if an accidental foul stops the fight before four rounds. Close captioning is available for tonight's telecast. And if you would like to hear the broadcast in Spanish, click over to the simulcast on Fox Deportes. A look at 26-year-old Julio Ceja with a record of 32 and three, 28 wins via knockout. Taking on 38-year-old Guillermo Rigondeau, 18 and one as a pro, nearly 500 amateur bouts, and a two-time Olympic gold medalist in the bantamweight division, representing Cuba back in 2000 and 2004. Oh, yeah. uh, I, you, you're amazed by, at least I'm amazed by this Rigondeau. He's just an amazing guy. He's, you know, probably got 500 amateur fights. Two gold medals. Like he said, I've won two of everything. World titles. Uh, every type of title. And look, he's going for the first round knockout here. Let me tell you, showing that left hand with some zest in it. First left hand that, that was out there was, was fast and hard. Right. Well, five of his 12 knockouts have come in round one. Defected to the United States in 2009. Only his 20th pro bout at the age of 38. Well, he turned pro when he came in 2009, 10 years ago. He was 28 years old. You know, he's, he's, he's a well-preserved 38-year-old. That's for sure, Kenny. 
but you know, with 500 amateur fights, more or less, he's seen every style you can imagine. There's nothing new to him in the ring. What about the fact of his weight always being the same? He's not like gone into different weight classes. Well, listen, I mean, those, 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 those type of fighters are far and few between. Now, those are a couple nice shots by Seha. He threw a nice right uppercut, good body shot with the left hand. So, you know, he, he's got a, look, a great left hook right there. He's got a good style. He snuck that in on Rigondeaux. But you're right, Lennox. He told us yesterday he's been at the same weight for the last 20 years. Well, he's, he's a consummate. You want to say professional, but he's just a constant all-around champion. You know, whether it's gold medals, world titles, uh, you know, Pan Am games, or world titles. The, guy, the guy's just an unbelievable specimen of a, of a fighter. And he can do it all. Yeah, he's, there, he's really serious about his craft. He's, you can always find him in the gym. And uh, he's always in shape. Works hard. Now, now, in all fairness, he's playing right into Seha's hand, so Seha's not a small guy, he's a big guy, um, and, and he's, he's a knockout puncher himself. Now, he's been stopped twice in his last four fights, so, you know, he can be stopped, but he's a good fighter. He's got a very nice style, and he brings his punches in real sharp, like that little left hook right there. Seha, the former WBC Super Bantamweight champ. Seha keeps those hands and elbows up in nice. He's not making it easy for Rigondeaux just to slide anything in on him. That was a beautiful punch. He said, oh, it's a clean punch, but now they have the chance to review it, which is great. It's, I mean, other sports have it, so boxing has it now. Why do we have to go to the back of the head argument? <laughs> <laughs> well, the viewers have about four hours to spare. You guys right, can continue. Right, right. <laughs> well, let's get back to the fight here, because you know, I only say there's a nice shootout going on right here, because neither guy, neither guy has given up much ground. And Rigondeaux is really sitting right in the pocket with a great, you know, inside fighter right here. So he's taking a chance because he's getting hit with little shots right there. Yeah, that's because his head's stiff. He's not really moving his head around. He's, he's, and you're right. When, you, when he puts it in the pocket, he's basically putting his head in the pocket. Right. And, and look, uh, a guy like Seha is really enjoying the fact that Rigondeaux is not using all of his defensive skills, that meaning his legs. And when we say in the pocket, we mean keeping his head in one spot. Ooh, Rigondeaux just got clipped with a little short left hand. Trust me. And that rocked him a little bit. I saw his legs do a little bit of a wobble. That was a good left hook. And the same left hook that Seha's corner was calling for. When you stand in one spot and your legs are stiff like that, you get hit. You know, it's easy to get knocked out that way. Well, Rigondeaux just got clipped with another left hook. He's getting hit with quite a few left hands right there. There's a left hook to the head that dropped down to the body by Seha. Seha fighting for the first time in 13 months. His last bout in May of 2018 had his nose fractured in the second round of that fight. It was stopped after round four. Well, he can't miss with the left hand. He's well. He may get what is a, going he, on? Well, right now, Rigondeaux threw another left uppercut right into right. the uh, lower section, up. and he's being warned about it. And if he does it again, uh, he's going to get Good. a point he's taken. Going. Right now, the referee is doing the right thing. He's giving Seha a little time. But the next time Rigondeaux does that, there's a point coming off. A warning from the referee, Russell Mora, to Rigondeaux. As we approach one minute remaining in round two, scheduled for 12. Both former title holders in the Super Bantamweight division. Yeah, Seha is a very, very accomplished fighter. And Rigondeaux, I think, just gave him too many free opportunities sitting in the pocket with him. He should be doing this right here. Yeah, but and boxing him a little bit. Let's bring up a low blow again. In the in the dressing room, the referee warned you about low blows. Out here, he showed you. In the center of the ring, this is where this is where the low blows are. Now it happened again in the ring. Didn't take a point away. So Rigan is well, really lucky about that. And I'll tell you why. Because some low blows are really low and some are borderline. And I think it was a warning that look, if they if they you know if that was a straight really low, and you know what I'm talking about. You know he's taking a point. Yeah. 
One of the hardest guys ever to fight in the world, ever. Glad he's not a heavyweight. Right? Well, he was. <laughs> Only for a moment. Yeah, and he won it. Yes, he did. Okay, so Seha had a great last round, and I think he hurt Rigandau. That's why Rigandau's out boxing right now. The referee went over to Rigandau's corner and warned him, hey, look, you go low again, and uh, we're taking a point. So there's not going to be any more warnings. But look at that. Seha is coming in there. He's throwing that right uppercut, dropping with that left hook right away, right off of it, without making big moves, just getting to the point. He's doing a great job. Seha in that second round landed 34 punches. That's the most ever landed by Rigandel by any opponent, guys, in one round. And, well, and that's what I said. Rigandel literally gave it to him right there. Rigandel needs to move that head a bit more. Like, he's, he's dropping it in the bucket, bucket, but he needs to move his head side to side, side to side, instead of making it a, 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 standard, a standing target. You're right, and I think he's capable of it. And, you know, I think he got caught off guard at just how good Seha is. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, four punch combination by Seha right there. You're right. He's not moving his head. Hey guys, remember what Seha told us yesterday. He's never lost to a Southpaw. 7 0 in his career against Southpaws. Yeah, probably not of this quality, but I, I hear what you're saying for sure. I don't know how those body shots aren't hurting Rigging now. They've got to be hurting. Seha is ripping off some nice. Rigging now needs to answer him. Oh, big left by Rigging now. Good left. He needs, to, he needs to capitalize on that though. One left is not good enough. He's like he needs to throw more punches right now. But look, look where Seha's hands go. They go right back to his face. He puts his elbows back in. He may get caught with a shot, but he's not letting Rickendall follow up. If anybody's following up, it's Seha right now. And I'm quite surprised to tell you the truth. Yeah, left hook, right uppercut by Seha. Nice counter left uppercut by Rickendall, but man, the harder punches are coming from Seha. Nice three punch combination by Sayoff. The four punch combination. See, he's Sayoff's putting his punches in so short, so fast. He's really not giving Rigandau a chance to counter. He's not giving him a lot of opening. Look, he's running those punches together right there. Ten seconds remaining in round three, scheduled for 12. Everything and uh, the training was hard. I, I thought I had regularly just twist my ankle, but uh, end up end up getting tears all down my inside and outside of my ankle. So, you know, uh, it's, it's sad. I, I would love to be in this atmosphere fighting right now, and, and, and who better to fight but Jamel? But uh, you know, um, I had to postpone. I think I'm I think I'm the forefront for the postpone. Are you able to get back to training at, at some point? I'm sure. When will that? Be? Uh, like I said, uh, I would I, if I, if I could have it my way, I wish we would have pulled out the fight. And we could have got it done maybe sometime around September, October. I'll be, be training probably sometime next month. I'm, I'm doing rehab starting next week and um, just drifting in it and uh, just getting back to the basics of it. You know, you've been in Coda's shoes. What does he need to do to beat Jermel Charlo tonight? He's gotta, he just got to be himself. He's got to believe. Yeah, I mean, uh, the main thing is he's got to believe in himself. If he believes in himself, I mean, that's that's just the key marking. You know, I, I don't think it's ever a style for any fighter to win. I just think you just got to believe. Believe and walk out there with 100% confidence that you can win. Thank you so much, Tony. We look forward to seeing you back in the ring soon. Let's send it back to Kenny and the action right now ringside. Okay? All right, thanks very much, Heidi. So we look forward to seeing Tony Harrison back in the ring at some point in the near future. Rigando hasn't really changed his game plan. He's doing the same thing, still standing in front of us. His head's still in the pocket. He's not even moving on his feet. All he's doing is absorbing punches. And Seha had a great rally to start this round as the Harrison uh, interview with the, with the champ, Tony Harrison. He was a great man, by the way. I, I really like Tony. He's, he's a good person. And, uh, and a great fighter. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Rigand Rigandau was trying to counter. He's, he, he threw a couple of nice body shots, but they're one or two at a time. And Seha is just outworking him right now. He's much more accurate, much more busy. And to tell you the truth, I, I think he's really putting a nice little hurt on Rigandau. Rigandau's got a great poker face, 
But man, this is a hell of a fight, right? Yeah, I, well, I think he's freaking does boxing wrong in this fight. I mean, a man with so much experience, he's just boxing this whole fight wrong. He's just focused on trying to punch to the belly. I mean, okay, here we go. Get your punches up. You. Oh, he didn't warn him. Didn't take a punch. Didn't take a point. All because it wasn't that player. It was on the belt. Watch your head. Watch your head. He's, warning, he's giving them both a warning. He doesn't want to take a point to change the course of this fight when it's not a flagrant low blow in the cup, and you know what I mean. Man. Okay? See, a lot of guys, especially, you know, old school guy like Rigondeaux, they make a living off of hitting the belt. Not below the belt, on the belt. Well, well he, he's got so much experience, I didn't see no hip punches. Well... I'm sure he'll try to get to these topics. <laughs> 15 seconds remaining in round four. Scheduled for 12. A couple of former champs in the Super Bantamweight division. The title eliminator. The winner will have an opportunity to fight for being very accurate. All right, here we go. Round five, scheduled for 12. Seha has landed on average 31 punches per round. Something ah. Rigondeaux is not used to. His last nine opponents landed an average of only six punches per round. That's, a, that's an amazing stat. Really is. And so, is it because of... Oh, man. Oh! All right, over to Heidi in Rigondeaux's corner with Ronnie Shields. Thank you very much, Kenny. What did you say to Rigondeaux going into this round? Because he's being worn out. Yeah, I just told him he needs to box a little bit more. Use his jab a little bit. The guy walking right to him. You can't miss him. When he get close, though, he just got to go up across both hands. What did the official say to you when he came over to the corner? He said they both are uh, uh, button hands. So he just wanted him to, to, you know, put the hands on the side instead of right down the middle. Thanks so much, Kenny. Back to you. All right. Thanks very much, Heidi. Oh. The Rigandale is starting to tee off, but it doesn't seem to be bothering Seha as much as Rigandale would like it to bother him. He's, Seha's taking these punches pretty well. That was a little high off the gloves. Didn't land cleanly. But I think Rigondeau maybe doesn't respect Seha's power as much as it looks like the power that you think that Seha has. But to Rigondeau, he wouldn't be hanging in there if he felt he could get knocked out by Seha. So I think he's biting this time. He's going to try to land some hard shots. Break Seha down and maybe take him out, you know, eight, nine rounds. But Seha's closing up that middle. Rigondeau is not getting that left uppercut in there that easily. Right, I mean, he's, tri he's tried that left uppercut a couple times. It hasn't worked for him, so he should do something else. Well, he's going around the gloves now. But I got to tell you, Seha, in that last flurry, threw a stood, say, did that. Through like five, six, seven, eight punches in a row. But like, oh, he, I know, he's yeah. hurting Seha. Yeah. Seha's he, nose he's is bleeding. Nose. That's going to affect his breathing. Yep. And remember, we mentioned earlier a nose fracture for Seha in his last fight, which affected his breathing, and right. that fight was eventually stopped. I'll tell you, this Seha is really a. He's really a very technically sound fighter. Yeah, I when, like him. when experienced boxers see blood, especially from the nose, that that makes them a little bit more, ur puts a little bit more urgency in, in their boxing. So Rigondeau needs to get more urgent with his boxing. He, he can hit Seha anytime he wants, but he just needs to throw a lot more punches. And, and, and probably a couple of those left uppercuts snuck in there and, and did that damage to the nose, because you know, those uppercuts said. Against Charlo, this is round six. Rigondeau and Seha. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Rigondeau is ripping that left uppercut, obviously, to the nose. They did a pretty good job of stopping the blood for a minute, but I don't know if they can continue to stop it if he gets hit with that much more. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Rigondeau was just letting them rip. And, he, and actually, he's dropping his hands a little bit, which could put him in trouble to throw. When you throw any uppercut, you can't drop that opposite hand. Is it? You know, the guy's going to sense that he's going to counter you if he feels that other hand down low. Let's check in with our Felix DeJesus in the Seha corner. Felix. 
Hey, Joel. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you, did you expect this phone booth fight right now, uh, what Rigondeau is offering? Not really, but I like it, though, you because like that's it? the kind of fight I wanted. I mean, we prepared for a, a guy that got on his bicycle and ran around, but hey, that right there, I like. Well, what does Julio have to do to win this fight? All he, has to do, all he has to do is keep doing what he's doing. I mean, he's landing the best shots. He's, he's being more, he's putting more volume of, of, of effective punches. Rigondeau is only throwing one punch at a time. As you can see, the bigger man is Julio. Is you. Look, look, look at there. All he needs to do is maintain his composure, keep doing what he's Stop. doing, and not get careless. Thanks, Joel. Let's go back to Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. All right, thanks, Felix. The words of Joel Diaz, Seha's trainer. Arriba, arriba. Guys, Rigondeau has never been punched more than 82 times in a fight. Seha has already landed 153 punches in this one. And I, I think Joel Diaz summed it up uh, perfectly. You know, he's he's very thankful that Rigondeau said, OK, I'll sit in the pocket with you. Otherwise, Rigondeau would not be getting hit with these amount of punches. Obviously, though, it looks like the damage to the person's face is Seha's right now with those ripping left uppercuts and the blood coming out. And, and you know, you're right. This fight could have been fought Stop. in a phone booth. Arriba. You too. Both of you, get him up. Let's go. Russell Moore instructing both fighters to get their punches up higher. And again, I, I like that the ref did that, uh, Ref Mora, because again, this is a, a close fight. It could be a very close fight. And see, he just warned Seha for a left hook down low on the hip, below the hip right there. So he's being fair to both guys right here yeah. without taking a point away from everybody. Yeah. Rigandau is actually showing some uh, grit. Well, not only grit, he's showing some different angles, which is important. Oh, he's hurt there. Yeah. Oh, he's hurt. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, he did the right thing by hanging on because he was wobbling on his legs. Entertaining action. In the last round, this is round seven scheduled for 12. Let's check in with our unofficial scorer, Marcos Villegas. Marcos. Yeah, that, I have it 58 to 56. I'm just so surprised by the type of fight that Guillermo Rigondao is fighting right now. He's known as one of the most defensive fighters in all of boxing, and he's in there fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with Cejas. He, he can make this fight so much easier if he went back to that style that he uh, had showed previously. But because of that, I have him down in this fight at this point. All right, so 58-56 Seha on Marco's scorecard. And again, uh, Ref Mora wore Seha for a punch straight and low. And I, again, I like his restraint in taking a point. If it was a flagrant one that hit you very low in the cup down there, then take a point. But these are all borderline, and this is a close fight, as Marcus has it. You know, a very close fight. And a point could uh, really take somebody uh, out of the fight. Yeah, it could change the complexity of the cup. Right, one point could be the difference. Who has the edge, Spanish, in your mind? Seha has the edge right now. Like, he's been putting out a lot of punches. He's been throwing some good combinations. And, and, you know, different punches all over the place. From the body to the belly to the uppercuts to the top of the head. This is, uh, this is what he needs to do. Seha has landed nearly 200 punches, 141 for Rigondel. Final minute, round seven. <laughs> Our main event coming up later tonight, Jamel Charlo, Jorge Cota. Well, one thing Seha is really doing well, he, when he throws his combinations, he's getting his hands back so fast by the time Rigondel throws his counter, his hands are back, and he's protected himself. Great, great defensive move on Seha's bar. He just did it again right yeah. there. He's kept his hands back. Nice. <laughs> 15 seconds remaining in round seven. WEC Super Bantamweight title eliminator. Stop! 
go. Limpia, limpia, pelea limpia. And it's always difficult to, uh, you know, box another guy, especially when his trunks are pretty high. These guys don't have their trunks that high, but it's, up, it's about a couple of inches high. Well, I mean, look, you've got a cup that, you know, is very high and thick. And the, 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 the band is supposed to cover that. Now, we had a discussion in the locker room with one of the pitchers that we remember about that. And he was quite specific that on the belt was legal. So what, what about where the cup should be? Should it be over your belly button or no, under your belly button? Here, here's the thing. It, it's not about where the, it's where's the protective cup. Okay, the protective cup is sitting exactly where it's supposed to be sitting. And if you're getting hit on the belt, you're not getting hit in the protective cup. So it's not a foul. All right, here we go. It's back. Look, I'm going to tell you, ring it down. He better have really something up his sleeve right now because this is not his fight. Watch I mean, he knows how to fight like this. Yeah. Um, he's, 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 got, these guys are pushing their heads against yeah, each right. other. They got to right. be careful because uh, obviously the ref's warning. Yeah. But you, you know, called it. You called it, Lennox. I mean, but he went right back to it and did it again. Yeah. So look, I mean, the bottom line is this: Rickendale better pull something out of his back pocket right now because the gut. Okay. Yeah, he's charging with his head a little bit too much, like a rhinoceros. Let's go, let's go. Okay, I still like the restraint of the referee. I think he's doing a great job. And yeah, both fighters were warned for that earlier as well, leading with the head. Look at that, those are little tap jabs right there. But let's keep him ringing down busy. Look, if it gets a nice right hand off, ringing down, get counter right to that midsection. I think he's hoping to slow uh, yeah, Sayon down that with up. those left you uppercuts. Know. You gotta remember, from a southpaw, when you throw a left hand to the belly, that's hitting you on the liver side of the right hander, which is, is a very sensitive spot. Yeah. Rigondeaux needs to keep his head up a little bit higher. Okay, here comes the point. Here it comes. One, one point, low blow. Uh -huh. One point, low blow. One point, low blow. Yeah, the ref you gave him ample warning. Over there. Ample warning. Come here. One point, oh, low blow. Oh, here we go. For both of them. One point, but, low but blow. I like it. Yeah. One like point, it. low blow. Because it, he's going to he's gonna have to talk about the heads as well. Arriba. Well, he, he, arriba. He has. Okay? He's been talking Without about everything. Cabeza. I All like right? that, though. Here it is. No here it is. Arm, no there's, there's the low blow. Well, no, that was no, a bit no, lower than that. you got to remember some. Seha was pulling his head down. Yeah. Look at it. I agree with that. you pull your head down, you're pulling them. You're making the punch stray lower. And even though he pulled his head down, that punch did not stray that low. Oh, that was a big left hand by Wigan. Yeah, but oh, go, hold on. That hurt him. That hurt. Wigan needs to take advantage of that. He shouldn't have pulled. He's his going hand. to. One point taken away from both what fighters in this round, which means nothing happened. Right. Twenty-five seconds remaining. Round eight scheduled for twelve. Wigan is waiting to pull the trigger off those body shots. He should have gone right back to that left hand to the side of uh, Seha's head. I think he would have scored before he gets his hand back, but now let him run. Oh! 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 And Seha is down! Over the head. Oh! That's what I was looking for. That was the punch he's been he's Six, been throwing all night, seven, and he actually eight, got yeah. through with one. No, he hit him. That's it. He's it's out. over. Oh! He didn't like the way he reacted. I would have given him a little bit more of a chance in that one. I think so too. Yeah. But you know what? The referee is there to protect the fighter. He took a devastating left hand. Yeah, but he got up fast. And he did get up fast, but that doesn't mean he got up stable. So the referee's got a judge. He made him come walk to him. And if he didn't like how he walked to him, he is under obligation to stop that fight. 100%. Guillermo Rigondown right, ends the fight late in round eight. So there's Rigondown. There's the left hand right there on the side of the head. Well, I told you I was looking for the counter with. And bam, that was right on the jaw. Yeah, Look, right on the chin. He, he's out cold right there for a minute. And now, here it is. Look, his eyes are closed. Boom, there it was. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 59 seconds in round number eight. A referee in charge stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is the winner of the WBC Super Bantamweight World 
title eliminator, the Jackal, Guillermo El Chacal Rigondeau. Guillermo, Guillermo. Joe Goosen said just before that he has to pull a rabbit out of his hat in order to win this right now. Well, you didn't pull a rabbit out of your head. It was a big left hand. I heard Ronnie Shields in the corner calling for it. Did you feel like you were down on the scorecards and needed to win this emphatically and decisively? Nuestro comentarista Joe Goosen dijo que tú tenías que sacar como un golpe de sorpresa debido a como que estaba perdiendo la pelea y todo eso. Eh, y Ronnie Shields también que tenía que venir un golpe decisivo eh, y fue una izquierda decisiva en, ese, en esta pelea. Bueno, todo fue cuestión de tiempo. Fueron pasando los rounds, hace tiempo que no peleo 12 rounds y quise trabajar un poquito en la médica de distancia ahí tranquilo. Y bueno, ya ustedes vieron, porque la gente dice que yo corro, que me monten la bicicleta, a ver qué van a decir ahora, no, paraba ahí de cu cuero y candela. Well, people were saying, you know, other fights that I, you know, I might get on the bicycle, that I run a lot. Well, that's not true. You know, I showed today that I could fight a short distance. I did it, and that was the game plan. I wanted to get a couple of rounds in. I haven't fought 12 in a, in a while, but the, go the left came and that ended the fight. It was certainly in close distance, that's for sure. Congratulations on a great win here. Kenny, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thanks, Heidi. Well, Joe predicted that Reagan Dow might look for the knockout in round eight, and that is exactly what we saw. The victory over Julio Ceja. The old master right there.